Muy buenas chicos, ¿cómo están? Sean bienvenidos, yo soy amigo Vier, estamos en otro capítulo más de Genshin Impact y el día de hoy me toca, pues bueno, que vean la reacción del programa especial de la versión 3.5 y espero que, pues bueno, básicamente les guste eh, un poquito la información. Eh, vamos a ver todo la 3.5, no la he visto, desgraciadamente trabajé desde las 6 de la mañana a las... Eh, ahorita a las 8 de la noche salí, pues obviamente son las 10 y media cuando estoy grabando esto eh, voy más tarde que otros creadores en contenido, así que aquellos que quieran apoyarme, les con un like, un seguir, ya saben que va, ayuda bastante. Hay el 98% de los que me están siguiendo, y esto lo voy a empezar a poner en los vídeos próximos, eh, no se están suscribiendo y no están apoyando el canal. Probablemente porque piensan que el canal es muy malo, pero recuerden, eh, aunque usted le dé seguir, no le va a mostrar mi contenido si realmente no le interesa a usted. Pero a mí sí que me ayuda el hecho de que varias personas estén siguiéndome porque atrae a otro público que puede interesarle en mi contenido y esa es la forma en la que usted me puede ayudar yo de hecho a todos los que se suscriben a mi canal así lo hago así que perdón por este minuto de interrupción espero disfruten mi reacción de la 3.5 que no he visto nada solamente algunos detallitos como los banners pero eso lo vi porque pues bueno después lean y a veces twitter es un hijo de puta y pues bueno ni modo entonces vamos a ver qué nos va a presentar albedo vamos a ver qué hay de, de la 3.5 y espero disfruten mi reacción y lo disfruten conmigo y si no lo ya lo vieron y les aburre volver a verlo conmigo simplemente denle al botón de off de no escuchar nada del video y con eso déjenlo hasta el final correr y ya cuando termine con eso me apoyan bastante. Y si no, repito, con un dale follow, un seguir, con eso es suficiente. ¿Vale? Así que venga, vamos para allá. Oh, it's you, traveler. If I'm not mistaken, you must be in Mondstadt to celebrate claro, eso vine. Albedo, por favor. The fragrance of Papucho, por favor. Oh, me? I'm conducting some research. Tú siempre estás investigando, Venga, cuéntame. Cuéntame, Alfredo, ¿qué es lo que vamos a ver? Verga. Ya aparecieron estos vergas otra vez, weón. Los hilichus. Ok. Should never live to remember their fall. Let's get it on. Ah, esto es lo que vimos hace tiempo, ¿no? Donde ella salía peleando con otro, sí. Amasita de mi vida, ¿dónde has estado? Mi reina preciosa, ¿por qué te. Dime que vas a salir en la primera parte, por Dios. Ah, oh, qué ricos vergazos mete, weón. Mika. Mika. El ballestero Mika. Mika el ballestero. Ah, no es lancero, es ballestero, lancero, qué carajo es. De todo un poco, ah, también es mago, ah, chingada madre. Lol. Lambert. Ay, vino con ley. Luego, no, mira, también vino el otro, el otro Sonso y, y Tignari. Eh. Oh, salieron personajes que me gustan. Genial. Los novios de Closet XD. Los novios de Closet. Vale, esto ya no, porque obviamente yo ya lo vi. Vamos a por acá. Esto ya lo vi, ya lo, ya, ya lo recogí yo, así que no hay pedo. A esta altura ya todos los debieron haber recogido. I'm Koi Dao, the voice of Albedo, chief alchemist of the Knights of Avonius. And today, as you all can see, I am joined by... Hey, wait, that's, that's my intro. That's what I usually say. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, everyone, I'm Zach Aguilar, the mm -hmm. voice of the male traveler, Ether. What's sí, up, everybody? 
I'm Amber Yo de ahí lo saqué. I voice Dia. And to match Albedo's long and official sounding title, I'm going to introduce her as ahem, Sumeru's legendary Aramite mercenary, the Flame Man. That that sounds really cool. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really like that title. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> And it just so happens that today is Amber's first time joining us on the special program. Yes, and I am super excited to be here. Amber? Oh, the little cheapy Dia. She's so cute. Ah, I can't wait to go over everything that's coming to version 3.5. I'm so psyched. <laughs> totally. And I know all our travelers out there are also super excited. So why don't we kick things off by starting with our first new playable character for version 3.5. Dia. Woo! Starting with Dia. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it's taken a while, but Holy she books. is finally here. Decent. That's right. And oh, even though she. she's technically a new playable character, we've already seen Dia in the game for a while now, and she's even become a good friend of ours. She was pretty active throughout the Sumeru storyline and helped us get through some pretty tough moments. Okay. So next, we'll let Amber do the honors and introduce... Amber, sí, entonces sí es la voz de Anger. Thanks, Zach. Oh, comparten voz. As you mentioned, a lot of players might already feel familiar with Dia's character. Even though she might appear carefree and casual, she actually possesses amazing skills and is really professional. She's already made a name for herself. As ah, as se llama Amber May. Vale madre, ya entendí. And even in the midst of danger, she has an uncanny ability to make Amber se llama la, la actriz de voz. Right? It seems like no matter what kind of situation we're in, as soon as Dia appears, everybody can relax knowing that we're in good hands. Is that what doing your Es que lo leí, lo acabo de leer. I mean, I wouldn't mind hanging out with Dia all the time. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm and now that Dia will be available as a playable character, travelers will have a chance to learn a lot more about her. That's right. So let's watch some clips of Dia. You might find that she's a little bit different from your initial impressions. We mercs have one simple rule. Whoever pays the most is your new boss. Ay, qué rico se tuerce. Yo la quiero, bro. la voy a sacar, bro. no me importa que sea del banner, del banner normal, bro. Let's get it on. No me importa que esté pocha, güey, yo la quiero, güey. You ask for it. La voy a poner más mamadísima que el Diluc, el Diluc pocho que tiene Cristóbal. Was, was that, did, did, did she have a flip phone? Do they have phones in Sumeru? <laughs> no, that's actually her makeup box. She uses it to keep her makeup fresh, you know, even when she's out on the job. In fact, she's always looking for a chance to go shopping for accessories with Candace. Interesting. So she's got a more, Dice. like, I want to say, refined Vas a side to her, too. I feel like that's not really a así. common thing among, like, Merc types, you know? Yeah, the mercenary lifestyle can be pretty rough, but she's not always on the job. She lets another side of her character show when she's off the clock, you know? Hmm, okay. I see, I see. Toma, uh, sure what everyone wants to know now is what her abilities are like in a fight. Right. Yeah, did you did you see her punch stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Dia wields a claymore in combat and carries a pyrovision. She uses fiery attacks to leave enemies smoldering in her wake. Literally smoldering. Vale. Ooh, fiery. Yeah, just like her. <laughs> totally. In battle, Dia uses her elemental skill to create a fiery sanctum field. When an opponent within the okay, field is damage, it'll unleash a coordinated attack, dealing AOE pyro damage to them. Nice. So, looks like this ability will be really good for swapping characters and creating elemental reactions. Except active characters within this field have the resistance to interruption in o sea, va a ser un soporte, pues. When characters take damage, a portion of that damage will be mitigated and taken by Dia instead. She's so brave. Y you know, I'm kind of worried that Dia will possibly find herself in a tough spot. Ah, don't worry too much. There's a limit to the amount of damage that Dia can take for her teammates. Besides, when her own HP is low, she can also rely on her own passive power mm, HP. Awesome. Sounds like Dia's pretty tough. And she has boundaries, which is healthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, she is kind of a legendary mercenary. I think that comes with the job. All right, let's move on to her burst. When Dia unleashes her elemental burst, she casts her claymore aside and enters the blazing lioness state. 
Leona Fogosa, mm, me encanta ese título. Dealing considerable so pyro damage. When the skills Easy. duration ends, she has no with a stylish no flying kick. kick. Ha! Nice. <laughs> yeah, nice, right? <laughs> And last but not least, she has an exploration talent. During the day, which is from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., the movement speed of party members is increased. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that makes sense, lore-wise, you know, since she's one of the strongest mercenary from the desert. I guess keeping the pace up even under the scorching sun is just another day on the job for uh -huh. Totally. Everyone might be familiar with her strong and bold character, but her closer friends know that after she's had a few rounds, she'll start to get into some more emotional topics. In her story quest, Manticora chapter, the Traveler and Dio work to solve some trouble Dia's mercenary group is facing. In the process, we'll learn more about Dia's backstory and uncover some things that have been buried in the past. Oh, another familiar face, Dunyar Zod, will also be making an appearance in the quest. So, be sure to look forward to that. Oh, heck yeah. So when will Dia be available in the game? Good question. Okay, so, event wishes for version 3.5. In the early part of the new version, both Dia and Sino will be available with their own event wishes. Oh, and uh, as a reminder to our travelers out there, Dia will not be an event exclusive character. After no. the version 3.6 update, which to be clear is the one after this upcoming 3.5 update, she will become available in the standard wish. And as for weapons, the five star Claymore, Beacon of the Reed Sea, ooh, will be available in the version 3.5 weapon event wish. Ooh. I know. Oh, oh, and um. Faruzan's very own hangout quest will also be added in version 3.5. So if travelers are interested in getting to know more about one of Sumeru's oldest researchers, then you definitely no, cállate, porco, no. In the hangout, travelers will not only be able to see more about the differences between the academia's various schools of thought, but you'll also get to know more about Faruzan's personality and background. She is such an interesting character, so I'm sure her hangout will be equally entertaining. Be sure to check it out. Oh, I will. In version 3.5, travelers can also expect an all-new Archon quest titled... Caliberto. ...which will continue our story as we search for our sibling. In this quest, travelers will not only meet Kaya and Sumeru, but will also be joined once again by our mysterious friend, Dainsliff. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Oh, uh... If I remember correctly, Kaya is so also suits. a descendant of Conria. Oh, I'm just what curious what will happen if, you know, those two meet or something. Ooh, you're yeah. right. That'll be... Eh, puede ser que sea luz also, o oscuridad, uno de los dos. Kari Bear? Kari Bear? Isn't that, like... Sounds like the name of a sandwich. <clears throat> Uh, you know, actually, uh, Kari Bear happens to be the name of a very important role in this storyline, uh, okay. and a lot of events in the story will be unfolding around this character. As travelers progress through the story, we'll learn more about Conria and the Abyss, we'll uncover more about what happened in the past, and even learn some secrets behind the founding of the Abyss Order. Also, travelers will find themselves facing a powerful new Abyss Herald as well as a new Black Serpent Knight. So be careful, Koi. <sighs> Why does everything gotta sound so scary? Why can't he be the Black Serpent friend? <laughs> I don't know, it just feels like every time Conria crops up in the story, we learn a little bit more about the world of Tevat. Huh. So what else can you tell us, Zach? You know, I can't say much more about the story. You're just gonna have to play through it yourself, Koi. Well, maybe just you can play through just, it. Just, maybe you can just, you know, whisper it in my ear. Like, oh. uh, my little chibi ear right here. Yeah, you know, I could. But I'm not gonna. <sighs> okay, fine. Looks like we have a lot of story content to look forward to in the new version. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't we forgetting something or someone? Oh, uh, <laughs> nope, you know, I, I didn't forget. Uh, we have a second playable character landing in version 3.5, and he's actually from Mondstadt. Just Mondstadt. Okay, you guys ready? Because we finally made it to Mika. Woohoo! I'm not sure if everyone remembers this young member rising through the ranks of the Knights of Avonius, but we have seen him before. 
Yeah, I remember he was the one who read the Grandmaster's letter during Vine Lacefest. Aww, he kind of looks like a little prince. Kind of cute. Prince of Egypt. Yeah, that kind of vibe. Get that one, Nala. From Mondstadt. I think we can let Koi introduce this one. It would be my pleasure. <clears throat> Mika is currently the knight's Mika most active pocho, cartographer and plays an important role in Eula's reconnaissance company. Even though he lacks social skills like Zack and doesn't appear to be particularly <laughs> strong, Mika is meticulous in his work and maintains a good working relationship with his colleagues. He's also capable of fully understanding his leader's commands, which is pretty useful. Yeah. And his leader is Eula, right? That is correct. Uh, the interesting thing is that he's able to understand Eula despite her awkward way of speaking and will even assist her with communicating with other units. Whoa, respect! Indeed. Over time, Mika has gradually become a very reliable member who could handle a variety of tasks and errands. But why am I telling you when we could just, you know, watch a quick trailer and see what else we can learn about Mika? Yeah, let's watch the trailer! <laughs> trailer time! Verifying our current position, measuring distance to target area. All right, I've recorded the terrain conditions. <laughs> Providing cover fire. Leave the wounded to me. Who gave this child a crossbow? <laughs> That's what I want to know. I mean, I mean, I guess since he was deployed as part of Grandmaster Parker's expeditionary force, it, it was him? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, his exceptional performance helped him gain the Grandmaster's trust, and he even taught him a couple of things. This training no doubt helped me develop a certain level of combat prowess, even if he himself wasn't aware of it. Ooh. For example, even though swords tend to be the weapon of choice among the Knights of Avonius, Mika uses a spear and a crossbow, which is a result of his combat instruction with Grandmaster Varka. His mentorship Cristo and Valgamer. focus on flexibility Dice. help Mika find a combat style that is more si suited a to a little guy like himself. Huh, shakes it up a little bit. Yeah, the Grandmaster seems to think outside of the box, and having a mentor like him will definitely be a he continues to grow. For sure, for sure. All right. Let's check out Mika putting his variety of skills to use in combat. As a support role for the Knights of Avonius, Mika has learned a variety of methods for assisting his teammates in combat. When he uses his elemental skill, he'll attack the enemy with his crossbow, increasing his teammates' attack speed and physical damage. Heck yeah. And when he uses his <laughs> elemental burst, Mika recovers HP for his teammates and gives them a special status effect. You wanna guess what it does? This status causes teammates to regenerate HP whenever their attacks hit an enemy. Ooh, that's helpful. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, no, Mika spends a lot of time working in the wild, and he's developed the necessary survival and adventure skills. When Mika is on the team, the location of nearby resources unique to Mondstadt will display on the mini map. Lo que yo te decía, le iba a traer esa habilidad. Necessary resources while adventuring. Sabía que iba a traer esa habilidad. He has a lot of support skills. Yeah. It's always good to have a reliable member on the team. So, let's talk about the event wishes for the later part of version 3.5. Hey, Travelers can expect to see Kamisato, Ayaka, and Shunha returning with rerun event wishes alongside Mika. So if you'd like to add Mika to your team, then you definitely won't want to miss this. Great. We've already covered a lot of content, so let's take a quick <laughs> break here before we dive into some other yes. version 3.5 reviews. Yes, Sounds good. It's time for another redemption code. Pues no me gusta Yaka. Y hubiera sido preferido a Eula con Mika, pero bueno. Dice. La autopista de doble sentido XD. Hubiera preferido a Eula con Mika, pero bueno. Porque si hubiese tenido más oportunidad de sacar algún dupe de Eula. Cristóbal Gamer. Dice. B. The Wind Moon Festival. Ah, there's nothing like the soft Mondstadt breeze on your face. So true, so true. I'm Yuki sure no many puro. of you are already familiar Bienvenido with the festival. With time, it has become an important celebration of freedom and love for the Yuki people no of Mondstadt. During Dice. the festival, people Buena. give fresh flowers Buena, to the ones they love, 
and follow the important tradition of offering their wind bloom to the animal archon. Mm -hmm. Kale, who's now been cured of Elazar, will once again make her way to this nation of freedom during this romantic and colorful. Yay! Aw, I want to oh, go. So cool. cool. Excited to see her. Dice. Well, it gets spicier Hola, because accompanying her for the trip is Tainari and Sainal. Ooh, interesting. It feels unusual to see them all come to Mondstadt. MR right? It's like all our friends Dice. from Sumeru took a field trip. Kale will be playing an important role in the storyline, and upon arriving in Mondstadt, she finds a mysterious prophecy in a Dice. book. They must complete the four pieces of the prophecy in order to light the lantern of utmost joy and receive a supreme blessing. Okay, so I'm assuming this supreme blessing would do something like granting your wish. Yo hice 70. In the course of helping Kali find leads about the prophecy, travelers will get to know more about Kali's background and see how she's grown to be the person we know and love. Of course, we'll also be meeting lots of uh, <clears throat> familiar faces throughout the event, so I'm sure there'll be plenty of smiles as we reunite with some old friends. Right on. Oh, sweet. Sounds like we'll be making some great memories in this one. Oh, by the way, did you two notice Tamea standing in the background there? And there's a girl with him. Nice M catch. Panda. How did you notice him? He's got Dice. such NPC vibes. Just kidding. Uh, yes, Tameus will be playing an important role in this event, other than standing too close to the crafting table. Uh, but as for who the girl standing next to him is, we'll have to play through the story and see. Ooh. Vale. Appearing in an event like Windbloom, then it looks like it'll be a romantic story. Am I right? Like I said, we'll see. <laughs> Oh, in addition to the festival storyline, the Adventurers Guild will also be preparing some fun events for our travelers to participate in Saul and Sus. experience the holiday Dice. vibes. There will be three available game modes, XD. Floral Pursuit, Ballads of Breeze, and Breezy Snapshots. Yes! Awesome! Vale, un evento. Ahí está, mira. Who is correct. In Yo Floral puro. Pursuit, Travelers will need to Dice. continuously collect bloom balloons to increase their score. No After collecting a set amount of balloons, the next area will unlock, and once you've collected a specific number of bloom balloons in the final area, a ring of pursuit will appear. Touch the ring to leave the area and complete the challenge. And in each area, travelers will also encounter airsots balloons that pursue you. If you're caught by an airsots balloon, you will lose one pursuit M. point M. and be returned to the start Dice. point of that area. Ooh, mm -hmm. scary. So, we'll probably need to uh, avoid And the travelers will be able to enjoy floral pursuit in single-player mode or tackle challenges along with their Dice. friends in co-op mode. Wow, looks like event. that'll be fun. What's next? Well, let me ask you. I imagine that it's one of the first. Yes? I, th I, thought, I thought you would, because the next thing is a rhythm game. It's called Ballads of Breeze. This time, travelers will be able to choose from three different instruments and use their instruments of choice to play through the song challenges. Nice. No, maldito evento, como lo odio. Here in the game mode? Yep. Ya volvió otra vez. They hold and play will be different. Ah, cool. I see. Mhm. Mm While performing a song, different notes will appear on the screen. When a note falls on the decision line, press the decision line to score points. The amount of points Dice. scored will vary depending Pero on cuando? your timing, and a rank will be awarded. Eh, apenas eh, actualice, supongo. A la semana de que actualice. Sweet. Oh, and, uh, es un evento grande, por lo cual va a venir seccionado. The input delay of your device and adjust the decision line, which will improve the overall experience. You know, just in case you're playing on your toaster. Oh, and uh, for travelers who are interested in getting a little deeper into the game. An editing mode will be available again for players to create their own beat maps, yes. which can then be shared for other travelers to challenge. I oh, can't wait. Yuki sounds like fun. Yeah, sounds like Dice. a lot of rematches. Se viene el nuevo <laughs> on. Del piano tilis. And finally, <laughs> el piano tilis. breezy snapshots, which will have travelers once again making use of the <laughs> trusty camera. Travelers will be given photography targets and will need to travel to the corresponding locations to snap some photos and receive rewards. Click, click, just for my photo album. <laughs> Beautiful. Ya habíamos tenido ese, el de la fotito. During the Bloom Festival event, travelers will have the chance to obtain an exclusive four-star Claymore weapon called Mailed Flower. 
Oh, nice. I like it. Really fits the theme. No recuerdo, pero hay un personaje que le sirve, creo que es. Creo que es de maestría, ¿no? Esa espada me parece, Cristóbal. All the different games that the event has to offer and join the people of Mondstadt for the festive atmosphere. Definitely. I can already feel the wind bloom's breath. Anyway, next we have another event also taking place in Mondstadt called Spices from the West Northerly Search. That's right. Este ya lo habíamos hecho. Se vuelve a repetir el evento. We helped once when we were in Liyue. No, que es de maestría, creo, me parece. She gained the attention of Lord Sangam Bay. You know, Dory, and now she's received additional funding. This time the scholar has come to Mondstadt to find people to assist her research Dice. and taste test some sí. special dishes with seasoning. Oh, if she's got then she should have all the more she'll ever need. Oh, sounds really nice. Uh, so what can we expect this time around? Right, so the for this event will be pretty similar to last time. After we start creating the seasoning, we'll need to add the ingredients to the pot in the right order by hitting the button as the needle points to the corresponding ingredient. That's gonna destroy my whole brain. However, we have a limited amount of attempts, so we need to add all the required ingredients eh, oh, to as many mistakes as possible. La mayoría de los que están sacando son normalillos. The recipes will gradually unlock throughout the event period. I'm sure this won't be too hard for travelers that are familiar with cooking their own dishes. Oh, este es de 480 proto. All the time, yeah. Uh -huh. sure. I know what you are. Listo, valga mer. Travelers can add their completed seasonings to delicious dishes to obtain No sé, no, no lo leí, no lo leí, no he leído nada. Characters to taste test the fragrant dishes in the serenity pot to increase their companionship experience. After they taste a dish, we can hear their responses, which will vary based on the character's personal preferences. This will test how well travelers understand each personal taste. Oh no, that's gonna hurt my feelings. Tiene toda la razón, la verdad. That doesn't mean that every character is... Para este es el segundo evento. <laughs> Too much salt. <laughs> For our next event, Dice. we will be heading back to the lands of Sumeru. Oh, eso se ve bueno. Remember the Beast Tamers tournament. This next event is related to that. However, the format will be pretty Soul different soups. from what you might expect. Dice. Because the Wisdom Orb Lance is still in its stages of theoretical no research. Jugamos. It might be a while before our next competition. Okay, but have you considered that I want it now? I know, but don't worry. To keep discussion alive and the competition fresh in everyone's minds, the organizers have put together a new event to spread the word. They purchased the rights to Theater Mechanicus in Sumeru and incorporated some fungi elements to design a completely new game called Fungus Mechanicus. Lancelot. Hmm. Seems they're putting a lot of effort into promoting the competition. That's right. So what will the rules be like for this event? I'm gonna tell ya. Hmm. In Fungus Mechanicus, we will be controlling pieces that look like fungi, mm -hmm. aptly named Little Fungi. Mm -hmm. Our enemies will be Mechanicae, which I'm sure many of you have seen before. The Little Fungi will automatically attack the nearest Mechanicae, and travelers will be able to select the Little Fungi Lance and control their movement or Dice. order them to attack a specific Regresa target. Oh, oh, During the challenge, ay. we'll need to command our Soul Fungi soups. and defeat all the Mechanicae to clear the stage Existe and receive rewards. Hey, wait, did you say we're going to go up against the Mechanicae that Dice. we were controlling in the previous evento. Theater Mechanicus event? What's wrong, Koi, huh? What's wrong? What do you mean, what's wrong? They were our friends. Look, they're attacking your little fungi now. Oh, gosh, you're right. They need to die. It's okay. By using marvelous jelly, we ah, o sea, al revés. Ahora nosotros vamos a matar a los otros. Using these skills at the right moment is the key to achieving victory. Marvelous jelly will be gradually restored over time, and plaudatory protection will randomly appear during the challenge, granting an additional amount of jelly. Looks like we'll need some strategy. Like you have to plan out every move of your betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> some familiar friends from the Beast Tamers tournament will be making an appearance too. Oh, do you guys remember uh, Bongo Head and Twirly Whirly? Yeah. Travelers can feed their fungi marvelous jelly to interact with them too. Ooh. In addition to these events in Mondstadt and Sumeru, the upcoming version will also include the Vibro Lanzelo. Crystal Verification. Este ya también lo tuvimos. An engineer from Fontaine has arrived at the outskirts of the chasm to study the harmonic motion between gems known as Vibro Crystals and collect data in an effort to clear the name of his colleague. Interesting. So he's helping out a colleague. What happened? Well, apparently, uh, after completing his vibro crystal research, Patrice returned to his home nation, but came under Sound suspicion soups. for faking Easy. his research data. 
Tranquilo, uh -oh. Cursi XD. Yeah, so now he's found someone to come to the chasm in his place and verify his findings. Ooh. Sounds like it isn't easy being an engineer in Fontaine. That's why I stick to beating up bad guys. Nice. Yeah, from the sound of it, we're still gonna have to fight here, too. In this event, travelers can connect transmitter and receiver crystals and attempt to produce various effects that will allow you to defeat your Cristo foes with ease. Mer. Score points Dice. during the challenge, and Esa you will be awarded bueno medals based on the gas. score and receive Saul the corresponding Sucs. rewards. Oh. So there's a lot going on here with the crystals and effects. Can you give us more details? Sure thing. I know it might sound a little complicated, <inaudible> but honestly it's not too tough <inaudible> once you get the hang of it. <inaudible> the various effects are basically buff effects that we can receive during the challenge, and these effects are triggered by combining transmitter and receiver crystals. Transmitter crystals are the conditions for triggering the buff effect, and <inaudible> <receiver> <inaudible> it's are the buff effect that occurs <inaudible> once those conditions are met. Oh, okay, I think I got it. La mayoría de los eventos son repollo. The experiments, travelers will need to assemble two teams of characters as La mayoría lo que van a traer repollo, la verdad. Crystal harmonic schema. Travelers will then carry out two rounds of combat. Mm, nunca estoy del lado de Lancelot, pero tiene razón. There's no need to worry. The event will also Oh, te van a dejar probar la vía, genial. Everyone. Eso me pareció, no sé si lo te da cierto. Deja un sal que guapo. The highest here? The garbage can? No. No. Just aiming for participation rewards. Yeah. <laughs> I like my suggestion. Anyway, Amber, what else is there? El viajero me representa yo. Ah, mira, libros. Venga, esta va a ser el último evento. Classic ley line overflow event, which will give travelers the chance to stock up on character experience books and more. I'm sure many of our viewers are pretty familiar with this. Pero en la 3.6. It's super helpful for those who are looking to level up your characters. So. Be sure not to miss it. All right, switching gears. In version 3.5, a limited time heated battle mode. Oh, no, so you know, no, 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 the number of elemental dice required to play the first card from your hand every round will be reduced by two. Also, the number of elemental dice required to use the first character skill each round will be reduced by one. Okay. Yeah, from the sound of it, the pace of the game will Saul be Sucs. much faster. Yeah, I like it. Eso I hope all no our Genius Invocation no fans will enjoy si it. Last but not least, we have a system-related update. Uh, I think you'll like this one. After Black the version 3.5 update, the game will be adding additional rewards for completing no Archon quests. Upon completing each Archon quest, Travelers will receive one intertwined fate, along with a variety of other rewards. Once the update is complete, travelers can view the tour guide feature in the Adventurer's Handbook to claim the corresponding rewards. Yay! More Cristo intertwined Valdemir. fate! And Dice. just don't forget to claim it after the version update. I kind of yeah. sometimes. And with that, let's get to today's last redemption code. Redemption code! Sounds good! Lancelot. Dice, me sirve. Probablemente pueda salir, creo que sí, Cristóbal. I can't believe how fast that went. Like, este we're amlaps. already at the end of today's program. Dice, I know. Sígueme para más consejos de subir right los talentos del yeah, amor. Yeah, really did. Lancelot. So, Amber, how did you enjoy Dice, being on the special program? I absolutely loved it. Like, I'm so hyped for this new version. I'm hyped for Dia and Mika, and I'm a little biased, but, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty hyped for Dia. Her, she looks super strong, and she just looks like she kicks butt, you know? Yeah. I'm excited for all the new storylines, and yeah, I think it was a good idea to bring me on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am simultaneously no, impressed and kind of livid. <laughs> Y'all love me. How dare you? It was so good. I'm really excited for the little fun guy. <laughs> what? I am. We all love the fun guy, too. Yeah. Like fun guy. yeah. And also, there's a lot of cool new story Dice. content coming up, Los like ojos de Barbizon's que no tiene Hangout alma XD. and uh, Dia's story quest, and also the whole Dane's Live Conria thing. That's, that's going to expand the world of Tevat. 
That's I'm pretty, right. I'm pretty excited for, for all that stuff. What about yeah. Windbloom? Oh, yeah. So no, I'm so super excited for all the Windbloom events. Um, yeah, and Dia and Mika, Mika, of course. Uh, I know the rhythm game is coming back, so that'll be super fun, even though I am horrible at it. Oh, that's uh, okay. I'll teach you. Okay, good. Yeah, no, I need some <laughs> I need some help. But I love rhythm games. I'm just not great at them. But yeah, no, it was awesome to have you both here on the special program. And I hope everyone will enjoy all the new content coming our way in version 3.5. See you all in game. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bien chicos, eh, por aquí termina el grabado, espero les haya gustado, 35 minutitos, yo sé que es largo, eh, muchas gracias a los que llegaron hasta aquí, un beso, un abrazo y bueno, esa fue mi reacción para el programa especial de la 3.5. Ya les traeré un poquito de resumen y, de, y les iré sacando los eventos como siempre y bueno, espero que me sigan apoyando en esa parte. Nos vemos hasta la próxima, soy Blackbeard, cuídense mucho, un abrazote y bye.